hop out the wheel like a fence. I hop out the wheel like a fence. I hop out the wheel like a fence. I hop out the wheel like a fence. Yeah. I have out the wheel like I'm fast. I have out the wheel like I'm fast. I have out the wheel like I'm fast. I strip the door like a lash. Boy, I'm a king out of hell. I just wanna give me a mess. It live at the top of the planet. Look at you! Oh, he's so fat. You are so fing fine. You just made it to your 35th? 35th birthday. 35th birthday! <laughs> like, what was your most memorable birthday? Because this has obviously got to be like one of your craziest birthdays. <laughs> we rented out a club in Birmingham. We tore that club uh -oh. up. We did. <laughs> and she's extremely sincere. She looks you straight in your eyes. She lets you know how she feels. Losing your brother, you know, you probably went inward, did you? Major. Justin, Justin, welcome back to Classic Conversation, man. I know last time we had you on, you was talking about Influencer. This time, it's a brand new story. Uh, yeah. You're on the MTV show, The Love Experience. Um, but before we get into that, for everybody who don't know you, give us a little background about yourself, You know where you're from, what you're doing, how you got into what you're doing, and just let the people know who you are. All right, too easy. And I'm glad you got me back, man. Uh, <laughs> anytime, anytime, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so for those that don't know me, I'm Justin Lockett. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. I went to Troy University. Um, part of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hey, um, I'm passionate about my nonprofit organization, that of which I use to speak out against violent crimes in the community and also help enrich the lives of young black men. Hopefully that they'll make better choices and become upstanding citizens in the community. Um, you know, I, I'm a little silly, you know, I make a little funny videos here and there. Right. Um, that shows my sense of humor. But at the end of the day, man, I'm the kind of person that wants to see somebody else do better and I do anything to help them. Right. From from being an um, influencer, because, um, you know, seeing you do your skits on Instagram and TikTok and stuff like that, from being an influencer to tra transition into the foundation, like, how did you get into both? Like, how did you become, was you an influencer before you did the foundation or did you already have the foundation going? So the foundation I created in 2013, but I've been working with kids my whole life. Um, I right. had a daycare. Um, I worked with big brothers, big sisters when I was in college. Um, and so that's always been who I am, but I've always been relatively introverted. Um, okay. I kept to myself. So people around me knew that I was silly, right? But people right. that didn't know me didn't Same know way. I'm the same uh, way. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't trust yeah. me. Yeah, that part. Right. And, um, so actually, I was in Atlanta and I was with a few friends and they was like, you got to start making TikToks. At that time, all I thought TikTok was a bunch of people getting on the Internet dancing. I was right. like, Man, I ain't doing no TikTok. I ain't doing no TikTok. And I did one and it did well. Uh, so I made another one and that did well. And then I, I kept doing it um, for a while. We was able to monetize it until they shut that down. Um, but the beautiful thing about making the reels, which kept me doing it, was the reach, the audience that it got me, was able to bring in new people who then could look at my profile, find out about the foundation, and they could um, support it, right. um, find out about things I stood for. So it was almost like a double-edged sword. Right, I'm right. having fun, but at the same time, I'm indirectly bringing people to see what I uh, really care about. Right, right. So how many kids you got like in your foundation right now? And then and when you when you, after you talk about that, you say they shut it down. Was it because of the foundation situation or no? So um at a point Instagram and, and Facebook was paying, you know, every month for you to get so many views, you get X amount of dollars. Right. Um and March this year they shut that down. Uh right. but that's for everybody across the board. So you had to come up with other ways, whether it be YouTube. Or right. try to get money on TikTok, or just kind of find new ways uh, to to get that money. But for me, it really wasn't about the money. Right. I was doing it way before that, just to show my sense of humor um, and continue to grill, build that audience. And that's why I continue to do it because if I can make you laugh, and then you click my profile, and then you're like, "Oh shoot, this dude is more than more just this silly that. video." Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, so um, you've been doing the foundation for 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 a good long time. I know I see you kids traveling and everything. So is that just you? Uh, you got a team with you. You got a team behind you with that. So 
we started in 2013. The mentoring program came in 2017. Um, and it grew from like, um, started with two boys. Now we're up to about 15 enrolled. Um, and so it allows us the visibility through social media that people see um, has allowed people to support us. And we've gone on trips. So this trip we took to Washington, D.C., believe it or not, I had someone who saw real. They were entertained by it. They continued to look up more reels. They found out about the foundation, took the foundation to their workplace, and their company donated enough money for us to go wow. on that trip. Right? Wow. And that made me say, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. Wow. And as far as my team, for the most part, I would say 90, 95% of the work that you see is just me. Um, I'm able to get people to help me on specific projects, i.e. the Christmas giveaway. Right. Um, but for the most part, what you see on social media, that's me. The mentoring, that's me. I bring in men from the community, um, men and women, should I say, who come in and speak to us about various topics. Right. And I plan the meetings. I talk to my guys. I go to football games, basketball games, phone conversations, pull up at the house. Um, you know, I might bring in a couple guys to help me teach them how to work on cars. Uh, right. But it's but for big. the most part, it's just very busy. Yeah. But how do, you balance, this, how do you balance that, though? Like with everything that you got going on from the influencer to making sure you got time for the kids and like, how do you balance your life without getting too bogged down? Well, the way I look at it, because I actually work a nine to five, too. Um, oh, so the really kids. Good. Yeah. So I'm going to answer your question like this. I don't think people realize going through such a traumatic event of losing your brother to a violent crime at a young age, how that impacts you. So trying to overcome that 25 years old, 26 years old, 30 years old, um, I've had mental health struggles um, and I'm more open about those than I've ever been. And so where somebody might look at what I do with the boys as work, for me, they don't realize how much these boys have helped save my life. Right, right. It's they've a therapy helped. for you. Yeah. yeah, it is. They've, they've helped me make better decisions from who I used right. to be, from some of the things that I've seen. Right. Um, I think of them no matter what it is I'm doing. So wherever I go, it's like, let's just say I got into it with somebody at the grocery store. Okay, so what if one of them found out I did this? Right. right. It's almost like I got kids and don't. Right. Um, you were they, they, more responsible yeah. by having them on your mind all the time. That part. And, yeah. you know, if I've ever gotten the depressed modes or I've had moments where I was really down and one of them was sending me a text message or call and it's something about a kid, yeah. right, that can rejuvenate you in a way that nobody else can. Yeah, because you know they mean it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they ain't got exactly. no motive. They're too young to have a motive, but, you know, they, they mean what they say. Oh, trust me, I got a six-year-old, and <laughs> man, <laughs> it's it's whatever she want. You know, she knows yeah. she got me wrapped right around her finger, and it means yeah. something for her, for her to say something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I totally get that. Um, but your show, I mean, you on MTV. You done parlayed everything that you done done to get on MTV. So you own the love experiment. Um, brand new show. I watched both episodes. Um, so talking about love, because because basically you got three girls who are looking for love for all the guys that showed up that they that they gonna pick, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, before we get into the show, like how was how was it growing up for you, like with love? Did you did you experience from your mom and your dad? Uh, you know, did you see it from you know, whether you had relatives, they had good relationships, like how, how do how do you view love? So in my house, uh, my parents divorced when I was really young, um, before I was three. So I never saw how a man and a woman love each other that, um, as a kid. Um, even as a kid, my mom would tell me that I would walk around. Hey, mom, is, is, that, a, is that a family over there? Is, is that a family? Um, and I would always say how I wanted one. Right. Um, and so that was the thing. And then, of course, you know, growing up in our age group, it was tough love in our house. Yeah, right? Absolutely. You know? <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, guys, you know, we, you know, if you don't shut that noise up, I give you something to cry about. Right, right, right. right. Um, 
You know, you you hear a lot from your grandmamas and your aunts and your uncles, right? You don't need no girlfriend. Get out there and have all your fun. Get as many of them as you can. Right. Live it um, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what you hear from the people around you. But in my neighborhood, I'm trying to think. Most of us, most of my friends, we grew up in single parent households. There were some of us, some of my friends did have both their parents in, in the house. Right. Um, but I really didn't start learning what love was probably until I was in college or a little bit thereafter. Um, Cause even when I had a girlfriend, I didn't know what to do with her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was going around, I had a girlfriend, but I still had, Girls, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? you're not being in one person, yeah, exactly. Um, but the crazy thing is, once I saw somebody crying, right, like truly heartbroken because of something I did, it reminded me of a face that I saw as a kid, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, Man, you know what? That ain't me, that ain't right. what I want to do. Um, right. I don't want to go around hurting women because of my immaturity or my inability right. to make decisions. I don't want that. Like it hurt me to see that girl or these girls like that. Um, and so I started to grow up. I started learning from my mistakes. Um, and then and I think that's where maturity come in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause everybody, everybody young and do wild stuff. So yeah. I think that's maturity going, but go ahead, go ahead, finish up. So even in college, um, I remember I had an ROTC professor. His name was Colonel Shannon. Man, he was a phenomenal guy, phenomenal husband. And I learned a lot watching him and his wife. Um, and so that's why I started to get it going into the military. Um, but for me, a lot of my lessons came from what I saw happen, what I did, what happened to me, and the feelings that I didn't want to feel again. Um, and it helped me make better decisions. And then fast forward to my brother's murder. It, it really got me to think, man, life is short. Right. Right. And, um, <laughs> right. I mean, you look around right now, people leaving. So man, right. quit. And, yeah. and so it's like, you know, what are we doing this for? Right. You know, I can go out here and smash all these girls, but what does that does that really make me a better man or more of a man because I did it? Or does it make me more of a man because I was able to love one? And then now where I am, I have young men who mainly come from single parent households who are now looking up to me to show them how you treat a woman, how you talk to a woman, how you love a woman, how you go to therapy, how you take care of yourself so that you can be a bigger, better man. Right. And so it's all come full circle from me being a young boy who didn't see it to now me being that older guy who's teaching that young boy how to right. see it and how to do it. Right. That's dope, bro. That's super dope. I, I mean, I think a lot of us can relate. Cause I grew up in a single parent um, home as well. I mean, we had aunties and uncles, you know, to help raise us. But where my granddad, I think, was the only thing that we saw of love. Um, yeah. uh, especially when you're talking about unconditional love, but you don't know what you're looking at. You know, when you're that young, you're just going through yeah. the motion. But <laughs> I think it's something. The older you get, it kind of start to click, um, yeah. and, and you start remembering stuff that you saw, whether it was the, the single parent part or, or whether it was the Two parent household, household, but um, yeah, I think it has an effect on us, um, especially as men because we don't yeah. we don't talk about it enough. We don't, you know, rely on each other enough, uh, lean on each other enough when we talking about these situations and how it affected us growing up, not seeing it, but now everybody expect you to be, you know, yeah. a man, and you ain't never never saw what it looked like a day in your life, but now you supposed to be one. So yeah. I, I, I definitely get it. So. Um, do you think men and women view love the same? I think they try to, um, but I, I don't think, I think, so like when I think of love, right, I think of trying to put somebody's best interests and make that a priority in your life, right? right? Being selfless, right? Making sure that you include them in your decisions, right? Trying to be a part of the things that they enjoy and bring them into a part of the things that you enjoy. Um, and so I think at its core, men and women see love the same way, but I think we express it differently. Absolutely. Right? Um, you know, um, 
like for men, respect is big, Huge. right? Like, <laughs> Huge, like, bro. yeah. And so I think there are things that women just don't think about that matter to a man and who he is and his pride. Um, and I think with women, you know, sometimes we forget to say it, right? We right. are like, I grew up where my mom, she showed it. Like we didn't say right. it all the time, right. but you knew it and right. she did what she needed to do, right? But what I've learned is a lot of women, they need to, I need to hear you say it, right? Yeah. I need to oh, feel amazing. it, like be soft, right? And so I think we don't express it the same, but I think at its core, we define it the same as far right. as what it means. But a lot of men, love has been transactional. I pay for this, I take care of that, I pay these bills, that means I love you. Yeah. Whereas the woman, she's desiring you to touch her and say so this and take her right there. To a man yeah. Really. yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely get that. Um and yeah, we two different species uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> when it comes to love. So getting into the show. Paige. Paige told you. So how yeah. was it standing in that hall? Uh, because that's what they call it, the hall, right? If I'm correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't standing in that hall with your earbuds in. You can't hear what they talking about. And you don't know who, who finna get selected. So how, how was that? Was it nerve wracking? Was you calm? Was you like, I got it in the bag? Like, how was it? So to be honest with you, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you two things that happened. One, we had music, man. The music was loud. It was the music that we wanted to hear. I was uh, using the music in the, in the headphones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we had music playing in our headphones. And so, you know, before they came in, we was, but the girls came in um, and the, you didn't, you couldn't quite see it on the show, but when that door opened, me and her instantly made eye contact, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt an energy b between me and her that was like, you know what, that's the one I want. There's three girls, that's the one I want. Right. And for me, it was page of bust. <laughs> like, because I felt that, uh, <laughs> I felt that energy. Good, yeah, it was it was pain to bust, man. I felt that energy. Um, and I think she felt it too. And we connected instantly. We talked. Um, and and so that's what's up, man. It's it was it was some guys in there, some good competition, you know, guys of every background from everywhere across the country. Um, but no disrespect to them. I never really thought about them, right? Mm -hmm. I thought about three girls and me being me. And right. if they choose me, so be it. If they don't, so be it. But you know we competitive as hell, especially when it comes to a female. You know we competitive. So how do you keep your cool? How did you just, you know what I'm saying, zone out, not worry about the rest of the guys, like you just lock in on yourself without even worrying about the competition? I put myself in a mind state of respect their choice, right? Mm -hmm. They got the choice. And so when I thought about it that way, um, I didn't think of it as a, com as a competition. I'm like, all I can do is be the best version of myself I can be. Mm. Right? If they right. feeling it, they feeling it. If they not, they not. But as far as trying to compete with this guy, right, I, I can't. I'm me. He's him. Right. And so the way I handled the entire show was I'm truly respecting these three black women and their ability to make a choice that's right for them. Right. And if it ain't me, so be it. And that's a good thing, too, because, you know, a lot of shows, it'd be, you know, a lot to go on. But the first two seasons, it ain't been a lot of, ain't been a lot of mess. It's really been, you know what I'm saying? Y'all been respecting the women and women been respecting y'all and y'all been keeping it cordial. So that's been dope. Mm -hmm. Well, I say this, <laughs> y'all been keeping it cordial until last night, because yeah. last night, <laughs> they you were spending the night. Um, yeah, and last thing we see is you with your do rag on closing the door. So, <laughs> you know, you know, viewers want to know. I mean, um, you know, guy talk, we sealing the deal over there. Like, what we doing? No, we um, we talk, we spent we spent that night talking, um, getting to know each other. Um, you got to think from that original first date that we had, um, she and I hadn't had much of, we didn't have a lot of time to connect. Right. Um, and then 
right after that, she went back to the hall after she got rid of Isaac. Um, so she came back out the, out of the hall. She was able to go out with Chris. She went out with Preston. And so now she came. And so now it was an opportunity for us to get to know each other. It was my birthday that day, um, which was cool. So I think it was fitting that I had the last date on my birthday. Right, right, right. Um, and she and kind so of just sat. Special. She kind of made it special too. She had the, the cupcake and the champagne and everything. So that was big. Yeah, it was. And um it was thoughtful. It meant something to me. Right, uh, right. You know, I'm in another country by myself. Right. And the fact that on a date with three other people, she still was able to think about it's his birthday. Let me do something for him. I had no idea what I was walking into. I mean, she right. was in um you know, her, her nightgown and right. she had the, the candles lit and, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. And um, that, that said a lot. And we sat and talked for a long time on that floor. Um, and then we went upstairs. We did, did the same thing, you know. Um, but you she say was, when she, she was, in her nightgown and that's when she relaxed. Girls don't get that though. Dudes love to see them relax. They don't, they don't <laughs> get that. They want to be dressed up, but they don't get, I mean, that's just me sometimes. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, so, for sure. But yeah. so I guess not saying seal the deal as if you know I wouldn't ask you nothing like that, but I'm just saying did that, that bring y'all closer for us spending that night together? Um able to have that con that type of conversation and, and build on on what the relationship y'all already got. Yeah, so it confirmed. Um so at this point, um, like I say, Paige has had to look at Four guys at this point, Isaac, right. Chris, Preston, and myself. She got to spend more time with the others. So I think this helped Paige be able to see me because of the fact that me and her hadn't had much time to talk. And now that we had it, I think you can see just on the camera that there's an energy, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. that existed that yeah. it didn't quite exist yeah. with the other guy. Yeah, yeah. It looked it look it looked natural. It don't look forced. Yeah. It don't, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all go real good together. Y'all can. Y'all compliment each other, seem like. Yeah, for um, sure. But it's dope, man. It's like y'all having a bunch of fun uh, on the show. And I don't know how you could. You got three beautiful women that that, that y'all running around with. And I, the guys seem cool. No, like, no no disrespect to any other guys, but you my guy. We rocking with you. Uh, we, rocking, yeah. we rocking with okay. Justin all the way through. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but nah, man, for, well, to close it out, um, appreciate you coming on. Um, just tell us your motivation. That's how we close out every show. Um, for, for people that's trying to do what you're doing, for people that's trying to be an influencer, um, what's your motivation? And what make you get up every morning and go get it um, when you want to just lay in the bed or do nothing? So for me, um, it may sound cliche, but my motivation is knowing that my brother can't. Um, you know, I, I, I have had a lot of opportunities come my way, but I wasn't the smartest my brother was, you know, right. and he had a smile that lit up the world. He had an energy that lit up the world and he's gone. Right. And for me, knowing that I have the opportunity to go accomplish the things that we both wanted when we were kids, not only that I can share who he was with the rest of the world by way of mentorship drives me to make better decisions every day. Right. Um, and so that's that's my motivation is knowing that I've suffered a loss, but I can use that loss to help somebody else in their situation and maybe make their situation better because of somewhat of the connection or the experience that we might have had with each other. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Well, man, we appreciate you for coming on. Hey, we rocking with Team Justin all the way through. We're going to be diving in every Tuesday. But let the people know about the show. Let them know when it come on. Let them know where they can find you. Hey, check out the Love Experiment every Tuesday night, 10 p.m., 9 central, only on MTV. Appreciate you, bro. Well, tell them where they can find you at. Instagram, TikTok. All right, so Instagram, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Whatever. It's all the same. Life and times jail. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you. You know you're always a friend of the show. You come back anytime. Because we, we want to see who win this thing. And if you win, you got to come back. Okay. I can do that. Got to come back. All right. I can do that. All right. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah, man.
Baby, the top of the planet